Greetings chums, Raw from a game with chums here and as you can see we're taking a quick look at Destiny 2 today. I wanted to take a specific look at the things surrounding the PvE experience and the single player experience because I feel that Bungie has massively improved in these areas over the first game. I kind of bounced off that first one back in 2014 because coming out from the perspective of a Halo campaign and lore fan, Destiny didn't really cut it in those areas. But with Destiny 2, as I say, I feel like Bungie's massively expanded on all that. There's tons of stuff for the single player to do with adventures and lost sectors, improved public events, and that's all without even talking about the campaign, which we're not going to look at today, but we're going to look at everything surrounding that. So I feel like there's tons of stuff in there for the single player to do now. So let's take a look. Alright, here we are in the European Dead Zone, which is the first sort of open world zone you'll come to in Destiny 2 and first improvement I want to show you guys is the map so hold down the button and hey presto you've got a map before you could only open the director in orbit in Destiny 1 so you never knew really exactly where you were in it you could never see your position on the map whereas you now can which is this little green triangle here the first thing we're going to go and do is have a look at an adventure which is probably my favourite new thing in Destiny 2 and luckily we're right next to one, so let's go and bounce off a wall. <laughs> let's go and start an adventure, which is hidden in this bus. So it'll give you a little description of what it's about, and um, tell you the recommended power, which is what light is called in Destiny 2, basically. But you can see it's sort of a similar thing to the patrols in Destiny 1, and it's a little beacon in this time the sword which is pretty cool a little flashing beacon stuck in the ground so let's find out what we're going to be doing ah thanks for checking in you two we've had our fill of red legion patrols and fallen raids we could use a spot of help with both see if you can track down a fallen comms terminal dev's got an idea that's crazy enough to work ah uh, it's difficult for the young to recognize the wisdom of experience so right off the bat you can see you get a lot more sort of character interaction. Patrols in Destiny 1 which give you a one-liner and then you kill some people and pick up the things that fall out of their heads. This, this kind, These kind of replace patrols. Patrols do come back sort of late in the campaign. But this kind of replaces them. If, as you're playing the campaign these are going to be the things that you're doing alongside it to sort of bolster your PvP experience. So I'm going the wrong way. Always helps to go the right way. So first off we need to scan this. Excellent. What say you use your access to prepare a broadcast in Fallen Speak? I've been meaning to put this Cabal communications cipher to use. The Red Legion fighting the Fallen for a change. Great idea. I can extract archived audio transmissions from any Fallen in the area. So now we have to go and do one of these shoot people and collect things, bits that previously you would have done. So I guess I just shoot random Fallen guys or... There's one. The triangle fell out of his head. Let's grab that and be on my merry way. Someone was definitely shooting me a minute ago. Okay. Where is the people I need to shoot? Come on. Help me out here. There we go, there's some more. Got enough for My shooting isn't usually that bad, I swear. Don't mention accents around Dev unless you want a day-long lecture about city dialects. Meantime, 
best sight line to Red Legion air support is the cliffside where you and I set up that refugee beacon. No one appreciates the finer things anymore. So that thing probably would have been its own sort of patrol mini mission in Destiny 1. And that's sort of step two of this adventure, and now we're on to step three. So you can see already these are much more sort of in-depth bits of side I can't content. We have to go back into the mines again. Chin up, you two. Good news. You'll be able to use a fallen teleporter to reach the top. Um, bad news. They've wired the place to explode. So. If I run a deep scan of the tunnels, we can borrow all these traps and explosives. And put them to good use, sowing chaos between your enemies. A lovely idea. Oh, someone just shot me from behind. Plant a scanner here now. Throw ghost into the floor. Same thing. Got it. Now I can transmit these horribly dangerous explosives wherever we need. Okay, so that was what part three. Now we're into part four. Broadcasting the message now. I decided to go with a House of Devils accent. Remember them? Oh boy. Ah, House of Devils, eh? You know the most interesting thing about their pronunciation? Actually, Devrim, let's keep the channel clear. You know, to uh, make sure there's no interference during the transmat. A lot of big red ships headed your way. Whatever you said, it got their attention. I used a pretty nasty word to describe Gaul. I don't want to repeat it here. Ah, uh, I do so love unconventional warfare. I'd be on the lookout for drop pods if I were you. Oh, I don't want to stand there. Go on, go on. Good lad. So yeah, we're into the final part of the adventure now, which is they often seem to end with quite a big set piece battle like this, which really wouldn't feel too out of place in the campaign.
Ah, uh, missed him. Ah, respawning red barrels. Maybe should have saved my super for the big guy. I could hear the explosions all the way back here. I bet it was quite a show. Which means the Fallen and Red Legion heard it too. Ooh. We'll let them shoot at each other for a while, and clean up whatever's left. Great work. So, that was an adventure. Which, I think, you can agree, is a lot better the, in terms of side content than the patrols were in Destiny 1. Alright, here we are on Rainy Titan. And uh, we're going to take a look at a Lost Sector now, which is another new piece of content. In Destiny 2, they're sort of like mini dungeons with a boss at the end. So we'll take a look at our map again. Which shows you the approximate location. So there's one just here, and you probably can't see the icon that well there, but it's the same as this one here. Sort of tunnel-like icon. It shows you roughly where they are, and then you have to go and find them, and you need to look for that. There's a piece of graffiti in the world, and you can see that here. So, I'm thinking this is the entrance here. So we walk through, and if it is, we'll get a little pop-up telling us we've discovered a lost sector. Lost sector discovered. So you can see there's a lot more sort of nooks and crannies and pathways and stuff to find in the zones in Destiny 2 than there were in the first one. I haven't done too many of these just yet. But generally it's a case of sort of fighting through them, killing everyone beating a boss, and then there's a chest the boss keeps a key to. Jeez, oh, shouldn't have stood in front of that really. Teach me for being so gung-ho. Throw a grenade down there. down a bit so I can get to that wizard. So these are effectively like combat trials really. I've seen a few that are a few rooms long and then you get to the boss room. This kind of seems like this is the boss straight away. running away. 
And now she has her shield back. I'm over there. Let me check if I have a solar gun. That'll do for now. So if you shoot an enemy with a shield of the same type, you get a nice big pop from them. Loads of them about. Let's see if I can get a better angle. Oh, it's like they just keep coming. Alright, let's try and pop the bus's shield at least. making slow progress here, <laughs> but we'll get there. Two more knights left by the look of it. Just me and the wizard now. That's the end of you. You see down there, it says cash code acquired down the bottom left. That's basically the key you need to open the big chest in front of the horrible worm thing. Ugh. Let's not look at that, let's get my loot. Nice. New emblem, a new cloak, some new boots, and a token. So that's a lost sector. That one was actually slightly bigger than I expected at first. But generally they are just sort of little mini dungeon runs, boss at the end. Big chest of loot. Alright, here we are on IO. And the uh, last thing I want to show off is public events, which are returning from Destiny 1. They're not something new here, but they've been changed up a bit. They're a bit more dynamic, a bit more um, larger in scale and scope. The first thing we're going to do is have another look at our map, my favourite feature. And you can see now that public events show on the map. Not only do they show you where they're going to be, but they also tell you when they're going to start, so you no longer have to go and look at external websites to try and track these things, or just sort of luckily stumble upon them. Now you can just check your map whenever you want and see where they are. So that one's starting a little over a minute. Uh, I want to mention something else to do with public events as well, because you will need to run them at some point if you want to get your subclasses. So at certain point during the story, you pick up a hunter relic. You can see here I've got a fractured arrow. And uh, that'll unlock my Night Stalker subclass when I fill that bar, which you do by running public events. So let's go to a public event and uh, maybe I'll actually get that unlocked. So we'll head towards that now. 
Looks like there's a couple of people waiting for it to kick off as well, which is always good. It's not a great deal of fun trying to run public events solo. Alright, here we go, public event time. You can see you even get a bit of uh, NPC dialogue from from them as well. Let's capture this lander. Capture, destroy. Either way, get it out of here. All right, this is pretty cool. We don't want to be standing in that. Because that happens, and we don't want to be there where in it when it does. I think I've run this particular event a few times. And I guess you're supposed to stop them from blowing it up. But it always seems to get blown up when I do it. Now 66%. Oh boy, let's move away from there. I went Captain America and saved us all. We knocked that ship out of the sky. I guess we did it. Oh no, we didn't. <laughs> Someone triggered the heroic modifier, which is something I forgot to mention, but yeah. Uh, I better use my super. Oh, we're a long way away now. So yeah, it's, someone can trigger a heroic modifier which makes it more difficult, basically. I don't really know what the um, requirements are to actually trigger them. Because I haven't done a great deal of public events. But that's the end of that guy. So I guess we did the heroic version of it. Yeah, yeah. nice. 
So that was quite good for um, purposes of showing the changes. And so, loot chest. About, huh? We shot down a ship and a commander, and we hijacked the lander. That Damn right, we did, ghost. That's what we did. You have exceeded my expectations. So those are some of the biggest improvements around the PvE single player experience in Destiny 2 and honestly I think I'd feel okay about recommending Destiny 2 to a single player, someone who just wants to play through the campaign, get a bit of additional content from the uh, Lost Sectors and Adventures, stuff like that. There's probably about 20 hours of content in there for someone who's just looking for a single player sci-fi shooter. Obviously you're going to miss out on the real meat and potatoes of Destiny, which is grouping up for the harder end game content like raids, but if you're just looking for a fun time as a single player, there's probably quite a lot here for you. So yeah, thanks for watching, and like and subscribe and all that good stuff if you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.